my definition of celebrity is how am I different from, not better than. And so this is not about Dennis and myself. This is we're we're here to serve, not to say how good we are. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the Funky Brain Podcast. My name is Dennis Berry, and this is my Funky Brain. And I'm excited to have my friend, a gentleman who I've actually done a couple of speaking events with. Um, he's been on Fox, CBS. He's had a TED Talk, Mr. Gary Barnes International. Gary, how are you doing today? You know, I'm doing fantastic. You know, years ago, I remember Tommy Hopkins said, when uh, anybody asks you how you are, say, unbelievable. And it's up to them to determine what that means. You know, that's, I love that. You know, I, in my book, I actually talked about a similar concept. And it's like, you have control of how your day's going, right? So if I say to you, how are you? And you say, I'm okay. Well, then you're only okay. Because you just said so. But if you say, I'm awesome, then you're awesome. Because you just said so. And then go have that day, you know, like say, this is who I am, this is how I feel, and then go make all that stuff happen. Yeah, when we uh, break the pattern of where most people are because they're focusing on what they don't have instead of what they do have, then we're giving them permission to see a outside possibility that, oh, well, there's some things that are going well, and I have a choice. So, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing that we can play with people as we meet them. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff, and I love it. So tell me about what you've been up to lately, and um, I know that this has been a hard time. Like the two of us, we do speaking. And so just this morning, I had to uh, cancel two events that I had planned because, you know, I could have extended it out and then later in the year done, like, rescheduled. But my concern is that not so much, all right, let's just say some, something magical happens and all this is over, all this COVID crisis is over. And they're like, okay, we're going to reopen and you can start planning events now. My concern is that people aren't going to go. So it's you kind know, of a challenging time right now. It, it really is. I think one of the things that we're going to see is – a pent up energy of wanting to reconnect. So I think we might see the opposite to where people are going to say, get me out of Dodge. I know a lot of people lately have been saying, I'm tired of the virtual hugs. I want to touch someone. You know, I just, the, this idea of, you know, the, the separation has done something to our society because we're just not used to doing that. We're a very social, very movable, movable society. And um, it's going to be an interesting thing to see as soon as uh, everything starts to relax, as well as in the spending. You know, I, I, we, we have the stimulus bill coming out, and they're talking about another one. But it's always kind of a, a chuckle for me is, okay, they gave you money, but where, where are you going to spend it? I, I think that's the big word for all of us right now. You know, truly, it's a word that we always have. We're just more aware of it right now. Uh, there's a philosophy that I have taught for years of launch and adjust. You know, I asked a question, when is an airplane 100% on target, on, on course? And the answer is on the ground, when it's not doing what it was created to do. It's only in the air where you have the adversity, you have the adjustments, the wind, the storms, the other things that you have to adjust to that is truly fulfilling its destiny. So in a way, what we're getting now is a opportunity to fulfill the destinies that we each have. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think just as, as human beings, we adjust. Another word might be adapt, right? And I think that this is a, it's a tough, challenging time. And we're being forced to adapt, which I think in some cases, you know, one of the things I just talked about on another episode recently is that I think that that while this is a tragic time, people are actually dying. They're very sick. This is a, it, there's some bad stuff going on for sure. And this is a, it's hard for all of us, but I think that out of this is going to come a new found direction, new opportunities, 
new ways to do things. We're all going to realize that there are different ways of doing things. And I think that we got, you know, and if you want to get more philosophical and a little deeper, I think that what happened was the world got really big, really fast, and we got really fearful, really concerned about the wrong things, like things that vital to our happiness, like money and power and all kinds of stuff like that. And I think that this could be in some ways like God's way, whatever God is, of slowing us down of God saying, wait, you know what? You guys forgot how to love each other. You forgot how to take care of each other. So I'm going to slow you down a little bit and then now go. I think we also got lazy is that we started relying on what was easy, what we thought was always going to be there, what was going to be the quote normal. And now it's, it's in adversity that we have the stimulus to be creative. And that's, really kind of that human nature, you know, as you and I both as coaches, is the people that we deal with, if they're not in a certain level of pain, they're not willing to invest in not only the monetary, but also in the pain that it takes to do the changing, the adjustments within their patterns, their, their whatever it is that they're wanting to go to. And if that pain is not great enough, they, as they would back off and it would feel pleasurable. And so what we're all, and the way you used an interesting word just a second, second ago, is that we have been forced to. And it really is. This is, I woke up a couple of days ago and I thought, okay, I want to run away. And then the next thought was I'd have to leave the planet in order to <laughs> run away. There is literally no place to run to. And so this is that unique time that you know, I think we all need uh, little badges or maybe a T-shirt that says, I was there. <laughs> and, you know, and, and working through it, and what you said is that it is tragic for people that are dying, and not to take away from that. But where are the, the opportunities and the, re in fact, uh, Jay Abraham, the, the father of uh, a type of consulting, uh, said that if you have a product or service that is needed and viable to the community, it's not only an opportunity, but you have an obligation to put it out. And so it really is, comes back to a very simple concept. How can I serve? What can I do to serve the person next to me? Whether or not it's a, a monetary exchange or just because it's the right thing to do. And I think we're coming back to that because of the things that we're coming together with, including no toilet paper. You know, it's like how that happened, I have no idea. Um, but it, it's a strange reaction, but we're in an abnormal circumstance. In my chaplaincy training, I'm a weird duck. You know, I have a background in psychology and theology. I'm a chap hospital trained chaplain. I am a certified police officer. I have been building businesses for over 40 years to very high level. I'm an international coach and speaker, and I go, I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. But my mentor in the chaplaincy training gave me this, this phrase that has served me and my community for a very long time, and it is that abnormal feelings in abnormal circumstances are normal. And so we can go through this in a normal feeling because it's an abnormal circumstance and we're having to adjust. And when we have that ability, then we can see the opportunities, we can see the potential, we can be creative and actually create new realities that didn't exist a year ago. And I think that's what we're seeing happening in a lot of the technology. Yeah, to bring a humorous note in real quick is that in our company, they said, hey, come up with a tweet that you'll have about 2020. And this one guy, he came up with the best one and said, 2020, I made it through this year. Now, what am I going to do with all this toilet paper? <laughs> but on a mar but to take it a little more serious about what you just said, and not too serious, because neither of us, we don't want to be too serious here. But I think that we did, we became comfortable. And when you become comfortable, you don't grow. And so you don't grow until you're like, all right, I, I want this now. And I'm hurting because I don't have it. So what is it going to take to get there? And that's kind of, I think, what you were talking about as a coach. That's what we try to teach people. 
Yeah, and it's opening up the questions. You know, when I was 20 years old, which was what, last year? <laughs> You're 21 now? Yeah, I'm 21. <laughs> you know, 21 forever. It's, um, I knew everything, and most of us at the younger ages, we did. And what I found was the more that I knew, the more that I knew that I didn't know. There was uh, that ever progression of knowledge and expansion. And, you know, it's like and for those of us that live in Colorado, I, I don't know, Dennis, have you ever climbed a 14er? Uh, yes, I've climbed about 12 of them. Okay, I've been on three. And the, the most discouraging thing on a 14er climb, that's climbing 14,000 foot plus mountains, is what you think is the summit isn't. They're called yes. full summits. <laughs> you get there, you go, oh, man, I'm, I'm almost there. And it's just like, ah. But I think the, the idea is I no longer look for answers. I look for an answer that takes me to a question, that takes me to another answer, that takes me to a better question. So instead of in a search for answers, I'm really on a quest for questions. And because of that, we can, you know, dealing with our clients that we deal with or just the general community. When people come to us and they just need a, maybe it's a word of encouragement. But the thing <laughs> is, is that, you know, in, in doing that, we're allowing people to grow and not to attach to us and giving them permission to actually expand and it's the stand in their their credibility. Their it's a a permission to be really. Yeah, and you know the analogy I love there is that when you're climbing that mountain and you're like, and you're really hurting, you know, and you've been through your food and your water, your legs are sore, and you're tired, and there's clouds rolling in, and you're not sure if you're going to get hit by lightning, but you're like, oh, there's the top, and then you get to there, and it's not the top, and you still have another two hours to go, and you're like, whoa. And I love that analogy. It's like, but you have to keep going. You have to push because uh, that's the hard times. And it, there's always hard times. Whatever your goals are, you're going to hit those challenges. And then that's what propels you to the next level. And I was, I was taught that you always have to be pushing uphill. And if you're not pushing uphill, you're sliding downhill. You're, there's no planing out. The difference there, it's, it's in the perception, right? So when I say you have to be pushing uphill, it doesn't necessarily mean struggling. It just means yeah. trying to be better than you were yesterday. And you have so, to keep pushing. I always say momentum does not necessarily mean speed. It means movement. That's right. And as you're going up the hill, people have told me over the years, well, we want to be just like you because you've made it. And I'm going, that is the worst thing anybody could ever tell me. Because if I've made it, that means I'm on my way back. <laughs> That's not a good thing. And knowing that there's always another level, always another area. And I think one of the mistakes that people do make is that they want to do it much quicker than what a foundational uh, pattern would be. And dealing with what we're dealing with right now allows us to, or it actually makes us slow down. And going back to the mountain, you know, above tree line, and when the the trail disappears, and you know this on the peaks that you've climbed, there's what we call cairns, and it's a stack of rocks. And what it does, it takes you to a next point where you can visually see them. You can't see the whole trip. It's the next step. It's the next segment. It's that next part of the journey. And so, really, it's that next step that be able to focus on to be able to get to the ultimate conclusion, which hasn't been written yet. I have a friend, a, yeah, a really good friend in Washington State, and he asked a question on one of my programs not too long ago. He goes, what is the greatest book that has ever been written? That's great. Are you asking me? Yeah. What, what is the greatest book that has ever been written? Well, I think it's the one that resonates with you each as individuals yourself, but my one of my tops is As a Man Thinketh by James Allen in the early 1900s. So he tweaked this because his answer was, it hasn't been written yet. Ooh. What's the best song that has ever been sung? It hasn't been created yet. And so, yes, we have those. And As a Man Thinketh is a great book. The libraries, people, when we move, our movers, they'll say, all these boxes of books, what do you do with them? 
I go, <laughs> read them. <laughs> it was like this amazing awareness. But when we realize the best hasn't even arrived yet and allows us not to live in the past, but look to the future. And, you know, just look at the, the flip phone that we thought was so cool. That came from Star Trek. <laughs> the, the, you know, everybody like, thought that was so, you know, whatever. And now we're carrying around computers, you know, that we don't even know how to use maybe even half the features. Uh, doing what we're doing right now to be able to communicate and see each other and have this ability to touch lives that we don't even know that they're there is amazing. And if we went back even 100 years, they would have said, what we're doing is maybe, you know, magical or, you know, we're somehow dealing in the dark arts, but yet we see it as normal. And so what are we going to see that is created out of this that is just that next step? Yeah, interesting perspective. It's so cool that we can do this. We're humans and we're not designed to be alone. I don't think so. In my opinion, we're designed, we're not designed to be in isolation. We're designed to have human contact. And right now we can't do that. And I think for a lot of people, that's really hard. Look what we're doing. I mean, well, we can't have a hug, but I can still look you in the eye and we can still have meaningful conversation. And it's a pretty good time to be alive. And while it's an awful situation we're going through, we still have this opportunity. And I think that that's really important. And we need to, you need to look at the silver lining. You need to find the good and the bad in order to get through this and, and stay positive. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know my story. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis back in 1988, went numb from the neck down. And uh, I was told I would be dead or in a wheelchair in 10 years. And I remember laying in bed one night and realizing that I would probably never touch the skin of my wife the same way. Because right now, it's like I have stone hands. I feel pressure, but I don't have the normal feelings that most people have. The next thought was, it's not the same, but it's enough. And we can stay connected. We can exchange ideas. We can continue to grow. We can still continue impacting lives. And now because of the technology that we have been blessed with, and we're able to use, now we have the ability to touch pretty much every person on the planet. And it's not about us. I, I truly believe, you know, I, I teach around celebrity. My definition of celebrity is how am I different from, not better than. And so this is not about Dennis and myself. This is, we're, we're here to serve, not to say how good we are. Yeah, that's right. That's a powerful message. And it's to be, what I heard in there is when you went back and you were talking about your, your multiple sclerosis and making the best of what you have, right? And being grateful. And I think we've lost that gratitude along the way. A lot of people have because there's always more. They're like, yeah, this is good. But then I'm looking on social media and they have more or they're happier or they're better. I, now I need to go there. And we're never content and, and grateful for what we do have. You know, like you said, like I, I can still feel the pressure. I might not feel the touch the way I used to, but I still feel it, like that's gratitude. And I think that we've lost focus on that. And I think that this is going to force, it's going to force us to become grateful again for the little things. Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity. Some people will stay stuck and it's going to be a choice. And they'll be in that gloom and doom and how it's interesting when you go through a scenario like this, how the naysayers and the, uh, the people that are creating all of the, see all of the underlying bad things, people doing things to us. Yeah. But, you know, they create the stories. Like we're going to be herded into uh, cattle cars and taken to, uh, you know, concentration camps or whatever. You know, they're a conspiracy theory. Oh, conspiracy theory, yes. Yeah. And so what we end up having is, uh, you know, the, the separation. And we're going to have a choice. Do we follow them or do we follow what we have been given as an intuitive skill? There was a woman I just saw an email from. Her name is White Eagle. So she's a Native American. 
And she said, you know, in Native American lore, what we're looking at is we have an opportunity to, number one, either fall into a hole or to move through a portal. And it's really about, I mean, that, that visual, it, it, it sent chills down my, my back when I read it. It's truly a choice. We can fall down the hole. We can watch the news 24-7 and get so, you know, get immersed in the negative that we cannot see the positive. Or we can choose to move through this and move through the portal to what you've been saying to a new reality, to something that is even better. It may not feel better the, the, you know, as we go through it. And the change for sure doesn't feel good. But in reality, it, it is a progression. Well, that pain is a great motivator. I think we just talked about it before. And I think that, um, that people are going to move through this they're going to start seeing that there is this technology these things are they're going to make us stronger so you know along those lines it's like because everything you're talking about it's so it's really inspiring you have an inspiring story and i'm really grateful that you shared it because it's a it's pretty personal too but you know that that's something that you didn't have control of but you've managed to make it into a positive and along the ways, it, it didn't turn into a positive overnight, did it? Was there some, there were some failures and challenges along the way, right? Oh, for sure. You know, I created a visualization in the process because they're literally they, in 1988, they didn't have any kind of procedure other than steroids. And I didn't want to go that I played ball in school and I knew the outcome that way. But I would sit in the, the picture, the visualization of what I intended to have. And I also didn't, I've never said I had. I always said I was diagnosed with. So I never owned the diagnosis. I never owned the illness. I didn't say I had X. It's the same way with people that say I am broke or I am poor. Broke is a point in time. Poor is a state of mind. And so it was at least six months before I started giving any feelings back because literally I lost the ability to walk, to write. Uh, I'd feed my ear. My kids would say, Daddy, do the finger trick and, you know, putting your, your finger to your nose. And I would go up here and in my ear and down here. And I thought it was funny and we'd make a game out of it. But, yeah, it took a while. It changed very rarely. You know, it happens overnight. It's a process. Yeah. Well, what inspired you to turn into what you are now? Because now you, now you took that negative situation, which a lot of people, some people take as a death sentence, and you turned it into coaching people to be more successful. But I know you put on seminars. Those are bold moves to do with somebody with your diagnosis. You know, it's, I, I'd say one is uh, I'm ordinary. You tell me I can't do something, watch me. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do it. Just because, just to spite you, I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, it, it, <laughs> you know, it, 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 so I do have that per, part of my personality that comes out. The other thing is that I don't know that. I, I, let me go back to my chaplaincy training. Is that before we were allowed to work with people in the emergency room, the oncology unit, uh, heart, you know, anything to do with death and dying, we had to go and attend our own funeral. We had to write our epitaph. We had to write what was going to be on our tombstone. So basically, we had to deal with our own mortality. And that really served me well when I received the diagnosis because I had a choice. I also realized that I could have quantity or quality. And so looking forward, I know, I know what I'm going to be doing on my 100th birthday. If I'm blessed with those years, I'm going to be skydiving. I have flown World War II fighters since then. I've climbed mountains since then. There, there were the things that I don't do certain things now because it would be stupid for me to do them, like bouldering or rock climbing. I don't have the feelings of my, I wouldn't know I'm holding on to the rock or the rope. Uh, but I have crashed peas since then. But the thing <laughs> is, is that I looked at it as, what was the purpose? What is it that I could share that would make a difference in someone else's life and give them permission that what somebody says is not necessarily written in stone. And what I say is that I would not wish my life onto anyone, but I would not change anything 
because I wouldn't be the person I am today if I did. And so using those experiences that we have, like what you had said just a second ago, it, it was, I had no control over it. But we don't have any control over the weather or maybe there's an accident or an illness or, uh, you know, whatever it might be. There's a lot of things we have no control over, even though we think we do. What we have control over is our response to the stimulus, to what happens. And most people, they don't give themselves permission to have that empowerment to make a decision about the stimulus. And that's where they can get stuck. Yeah. Wow. Powerful stuff. I, you know, I, what you said, I am. I have a chapter in my book. And, of course, that I am stuff comes from the Bible from a couple thousand years ago. And you have a choice. So I am broke. I am poor. I am unhealthy. I am unsuccessful. You know, you're giving yourself that label. Or I am healthy. I am strong. I am vibrant. I am everything I want to be. I am going to get there. I am wealthy, healthy, wise. Like you have those choices and a lot of people get stuck in I am negative. I am the low part. And I think it's unfortunate, but again, it goes back to what we started with, the pain. So it's not until you experience that pain that says, and then you come out the other side of it. In my experience, it was developing healthy skills to get through those pains, meditation, exercise, eating right, building relationships with people. And then I come out the other side and then I say, I am healthy. I am strong. I am powerful. I can do anything that anybody else can do. And it sounds like you've taken that path too. Yeah. Having, looking for the options. Instead of saying, I can't, it's how can I? And when we do that, we have been blessed with a phenomenal thing called a brain. And when we give that brain a question, a directive, then it's going to figure different things out. If we say, I can't, I shouldn't, you know, you go back to the negative thoughts, it shuts down and says, okay. And it's amazing when we start just allowing that intuition. I do a lot around intuition work. And I believe that intuition is for what some people call the still small voice. Other people think that voice inside of them is them. I don't think so, because when we get that intuitive nudge and we don't listen to it, we go to everybody else to get another opinion, then we take their opinion and it doesn't work out. The first thing we normally say is, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Well, if you had listened to yourself, which really wasn't you, it usually comes out onto the positive side. And people would, and my, the original neurologist told me that I was in denial and I couldn't hurt myself by doing a visualization. But, you know, just go home and enjoy my boys because I didn't have that many years left. And there were people around me. My assistant had a sister-in-law that was diagnosed with MS right about the same time. Went home, went to bed. Went, was, she, she died 30 days later. And there was no reason for it. And so, it, it really, we give ourselves that directive. You know, it, it just, I bump into walls, I've fallen off stages, and, but I'm still here to do that. So, yeah, there's always options. Yeah, well, I appreciate you sharing that story because that's vulnerability. And this is a great, authentic conversation, and I'm really grateful that you were able to come here today and share that. You're very welcome. Yeah, awesome, man. Well, I look forward to the next time that we can have a speaking opportunity together. And I hope it's sooner than later, and I hope it's before 2021. But in the meantime, we'll stay positive. I am happy, healthy, strong, and grateful that you were able to come here today. Well, it's my privilege and honor. I always say that because this is not a given. And I call it the power of yes when people ask things of me. And will I, can I? If it's available, I always say yes. And so I appreciate that opportunity to say yes, to be able to be with you here today. Awesome, Gary. Thanks again, man. So uh, what is it? What's the website again? At GaryBarnesInternational.com. My direct email is Gary at GaryBarnesInternational.com. Makes it really easy. 
Awesome. Yeah, so if you're looking for a great coach and you don't want to use me, you can use Mr. Gary Barnes too. And did, did you have a, a recent book out too? The, actually, it's the, the book that create, was created out of the visualization, and it's called The Power of Get Statements. And it's how to reboot your brain. It's actually how to program the reticular cells that we all have in our back of our minds and back of our brains that allows us to see opportunity and options. And uh, so that's the, the last book. It's, I, I really dislike writing, but that's book number nine. <laughs> and uh, it's just like whatever. But no, it, it's that being able to create the, the future. I, I say it's like going into your future and creating a reality, coming back to the present and having that reality pull you towards it instead of you pushing to it. And so it gives you that focus and a very real clarity about how to, you know, really see what is important to you and have a balanced life and to be able to create it very easily. It's simple, but not necessarily easy because you are going to have to change a few habits. Right. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed Mr. Gary Barnes and uh, stay safe out there. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Funky Brain Podcast. Bye for now.